Climate change is driving a change in glaciers across the world, and we're kind of seeing changes in time. Glaciers all over the world are melting, but at different rates, and they've started melting more in some areas than in others. Peru has been dealing with melting glaciers for 50 years or more. It's a newer phenomenon in the Himalayas, and newer still in the Pamirs and some of the other mountains of Central Asia. And so we have an opportunity for a group of people in the Andes who have had several decades of experience take what they've learned and enable them to share their knowledge and their experience with the people of Nepal and Central Asia. So we've gathered a group of physical and social science researchers and development practitioners here in Huaraz. We've been able to hear from people both from the Andes, from the Himalaya Hindu Kush, as well as from Central Asia. USAID and the High Mountain Partnership have supported a climber scientist small grants program. We've been able to hear from each of the grantees about the work they've been doing over the last year. This workshop is very different from your typical workshop because we emphasize the field and field training so much. We want to get out of the conference room and into the field where the knowledge of our scientists and experts can be of real practical benefit to our participants as well as to local people and governments. We train participants in the use of ground penetrating radar on the 5300 meter Pastaruri Glacier to determine the glacier's mass and thickness that will allow us to calculate change over time. We learned about the impacts of receding glaciers on water quality and water supply for the city of Huaraz. And we also spent a day with local communities discussing the local adaptation plan of action that they're developing to buffer the impacts of climate change. Today we visited the valley of Kilkai, which is located above the city of Huaraz. And part of what we're doing is activities in order to build that bridge, communication bridge between scientists and communities. The involvement of local communities, local institutions is, is really key to, to attacking problems of, of possible glacier like outburst floods, of, of, of attacking risk in mountain areas. We know that the glaciers have been receding actually since the 1850s, which is the end of the Little Ice Age. So that's why in 1940 you had lakes, and in 1941 a glacial lake outburst that destroyed much of what else. Starting in 1970, 80, 90, and today it's accelerating again. One of the great things about this program is it brings together people from different disciplines and from different areas, from different countries. We have people here from Nepal, from, from Central Asia, and they all have a different perspective on glacial lakes, on mountain risks, on, on management of mountain areas. And that is, I think, quite unique. This is my first time in the Andes, and I'm really surprised to see the communities which are so similar to the communities back in Nepal, not only in terms of features, but also in terms of the lifestyles. Que también ellos de nuestros hermanos de Nepal están pasando también por esta desglaciación, ¿no? De sus nevados que tienen ellos, de sus montañas. Vemos con tanta extrañeza o tanta admiración de que Vemos de que nuestros glaciales están retrocediendo, desapareciendo. Yo creo que bastante significativo, porque en sí nosotros todavía no nos, no nos estamos dando cuenta de esto de lo que es el cambio climático. Y yo creo que es muy importante esto, doctor. Tres burras por todos, pues. The last few days we're, we're going to trek up to Lake Palcacocha and we'll have an opportunity for hands-on learning led by the Peruvians that were in charge back then. Lake Palcacocha is one of the most dangerous lakes in the Cordillera Blanca which burst in 1941 and killed about 6,000 people just right down there. It's now about 34 times the size it was after it burst in 1941 and our model suggests that if it bursts again it's going to kill 30,000 people down there. So the risks and consequences have grown dramatically as the original dam built after the 1941 flood is now thought to be inadequate to the task of holding back the lake. 
We're going to go up to the lake where we will have the opportunity to learn from Cesar Portacarero, who was lead engineer on the Papacocha project some 40 years ago. Cesar has managed 15 dangerous glacial lake projects in Peru, and he's a priceless resource for our colleagues from the Himalaya and Central Asia. This dam that you see here was finished in 1974 and it was built when the lake had half million cubic meters but the current volume we could assume in more than 17 million cubic meters 34 times the volume that we had in 1974. We think that the the level of the lake has to be reduced in those 15 meters of the first 300 or 400 meters in this front part. So it's going to be a big work to protect the city of Carwas. This to do this, yes. yes, but in Incha it's necessary to define the features, the characteristics, the structure of the moraine. Here we are, we are sure that there is not ice inside, but in Imja, as far as we know, there is ice in the moraine. We cannot excavate if there is ice, otherwise we could produce a glove. From this conference, I think it will help Nepal, Peru or uh, other countries to mitigate the risk and to save uh, people from the glove problem. Мы имеем те же самые проблемы, которые бывают в горных странах, такие как Непал, Перу, Пакистан. Инициатива. Мы не должны иметь границ в сфере науки, и все должно быть открыто для людей. So we've been able to see similar problems and also look at differences across the different regions. And the idea has been that we want to promote South-South learning. And so by bringing these people together, we're able to see what they've learned in Peru and begin sharing it and applying it in areas where the melting of glaciers is a bit newer. <laughs> 